I have a colleague, and she and I both teach the sociology of gender course. So I walk into her class. As I walk in, one of the students looks up and says, "Oh, finally, an objective opinion." In her seminal 1949 book, *The Second Sex*, the French philosopher Simone de Beauvoir wrote about how, in our society, there's a certain asymmetry in how we think about the sexes. Quote, "The relation of the two sexes is not quite like that of two electrical poles, for man represents both the positive and the neutral." As is indicated by the common use of man to designate human beings in general, whereas woman represents only the negative, defined by limiting criteria, without reciprocity. End quote. Although we can think of the sexes in terms of duality, it's not a fair one. The masculine is presented as the default. All that semester, whenever my colleague opened her mouth, what my students saw was a woman. I mean, if you were to say to my students. There is structural inequality based on gender in the United States. They'd say, "Well, of course you'd say that. You're a woman. You're biased." When I say it, they go, "Wow, is that interesting? Is that going to be on the test? How do you spell structural?" Research seems to suggest that the challenge is the perpetuation of gender-based stereotypes and unconscious bias. Since Beauvoir's time, much has been written about the structural inequalities oppressing women. But the takeaway here is that even if the law doesn't discriminate between men and women, our unconscious biases and sexist norms embedded in our culture can contribute to perpetuating systems of oppression that might have no basis in the law, but are all the more insidious due to the subtle ways in which they operate, through things like social pressures to conform and informal punishments for those who don't. Where the inequality is structural and protected by the complacency of those in privileged positions, the incentives are all for keeping quiet. Don't rock the boat. When it comes to sexual abuse, this can play out in a number of different ways. Whether it's an unwanted shoulder massage from a coworker or a case of violent rape, our patriarchal social structures mean that in many cases a dominant man might feel entitled to a woman's body. And if it's your boss who's demanding a sexual favor, or if it's someone in a position of power who can advance your career or crush it, or if it's simply a man who's threatening, intimidating, who scares you, you might just give in, and then you might not report it. Keep quiet. Don't rock the boat. Because if the default voice of our culture is masculine and sexual abuse affects predominantly women, their voices won't necessarily be heard. And even when they're heard. They might not be believed. It happens in families. It happens all over the world. Part of the problem is that from a young age, girls are taught to stay quiet and be nice, and that boys are stronger, and somehow we are less than. That is why it is hard for us to speak out. And even when we do speak out, people don't believe us. And if brave women do decide to speak out, the challenges they face are daunting. <laughs>